So uh, I'll just run through sort of, you know, how we move from that first initial conversation to the book in hand, and give you a sense of trajectory at, uh, at a university press, our press in particular. Um, so the first thing, you know, I might have a conversation with someone at Congress, just like we are here, or over email, a letter of inquiry asking me if I'm interested in a particular project. Um, I certainly would recommend to, to any prospective author that they do a lot of research about particular presses to make sure that their, um, that their project fits within a given list so that you're approaching publishers who are most likely going to be interested in talking to you about your work before you, before you even begin that, that relationship. So at that point, I would ask an author for a prospectus. And I'll just give you a sense of what I expect there. You know, that's an information, informational marketing document in a lot of ways in that you're trying to sell your book to a, a given publisher. So ideally, it should make my job easier by pre presenting to me everything that I, know I need to know in order to make a decision about the fit of your project for our list. So we include the following information, an, an abstract of the project with detailed chapter descriptions, a sample chapter if possible. It's not always possible, depending on the stage of your project. A rationale or, or explanation of, of sort of the origins of that project. So the origins of the work, its place in the extant literature, your, your particular methodology, if you are putting together an edited collection, if that originated in a conference, I'd want to know about that conference, that information. For a dissertation, I'd want a sense of, of your revisions to that dissertation, because we, we don't examine um, unrevised dissertations. I'd like to see your estimation of what the intended audience is for your book, so how, how wide an audience is there for your, for your work. Um, also a description of the physical elements of the book, so the estimated page or word count, the number of illustrations or whether you intend to include any illustrated material, uh, tables, graphs, photographs, any other uh, you know, original drawings, anything like that. Um, and alongside that, you know, any possible permissions issues with reprinting any, any of that material, or, so whether or not it's reprinted or, or original. Um, also, any permissions questions regarding previously published material. Uh, we're generally looking for subventions for any of the books that we publish, uh, some of which might come from ASPP, we hope. Um, and they frequently have rules. ASPP certainly has guidelines with regard to publishing um, you know, previously, previously published material or funding previously published material. So we need to keep that figure sort of under 30%. We, we, you know, 25% is a good, a good cap. Um, so, you know, all that information should be presented in the prospectus. Um, you can certainly send letters of inquiry or even a prospectus to a number of publishers that you're interested in, but it's important to tell, to tell us and other publishers that you are doing that so that that's transparent, that you're making multiple submissions. Um, however, once we agree to review a manuscript itself in its, its whole form, uh, we will ask you for the right of first refusal, which means that um, you know, we have first crack at it. So you'll have to make a decision at that point if you have several presses interested in your work about who you want to give the first, the first chance to review the project. Okay. So at that point, we would proceed to peer review. And this is, I think, one of the areas that there is quite a bit of difference between a, a, a university scholarly press and, and, and a press that is a little more trade-oriented. Um, every single project that comes through, through our press is put through some form of peer review. So once you submit your manuscript to us, we are going to solicit reviews from two experts in your field. And they will prepare a report based on a series of questions about uh, scholarly value, scholarly contribution, originality of that contribution. We ask them some um, practical questions about, about length, about writing style. Uh, it's, it's a report that is designed to, to provide a scholarly evaluation of the work, but also uh, an evaluation of, of the writerly value of that work, too. So. So I, that process generally takes, you know, in an ideal universe, about three months. Uh, you know, it can be anywhere from three to six, and we'll sub submit, you know, we'll submit two of those reports. So 
Once we have those in hand, we'll then, uh, in a blind format, return those reports to the author. And I'll have a discussion with the author about that, about you know reactions. Uh, if they're both positive, that's great. Then we can move on from there. If they're not, you know, we might want to talk about some developmental work, working on some revisions together. At any rate, I'd ask the I now ask the author to compose a response to both of those reports that outlines, you know, their response to any uh, core critical comments. So if there if there's a um, you know, a, a comment on uh, a criticism of, of the methodology or the organization of the work, so that the author then justify, respond to those to those criticisms. Um, also in that document, ask you to sort of outline any revisions you intend to make in response to those criticisms. So at that point, you know, once we have two positive reports, well, I, let me backtrack, we might indeed choose to go through a second round of review depending on the degree, the positiveness of the initial reports or and the degree of development work that we decide as, as author and editor to, to undertake. Um, once we have two positive reports that recommend publication, uh, we then, or I, take the project to our editorial board. And our editorial board is composed of scholars from Wilfrid Laurier University from a variety of disciplines. And they're there to, to sort of, you know, as the gatekeepers of our imprint, so to make sure that the scholarly quality of work coming through the press is, is, is of sufficient, you know, sufficient, sufficient, ah, I'm blanking. Scholarliness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sufficient place. quality. <laughs> it's the end of the week. It's been a long week. <laughs> um, so they, they really act as the gatekeepers. So we'll go through around there. Um, of discussion. So the approval process at a university press is quite rigorous in terms of the number of scholars who are going to evaluate your manuscript. And, and there might be a few iterations through that, that approval process. And it's my role as editor to, to help authors through, through that process. It's our experience too that in the end what results is a much stronger book for having withstood, withstood that, uh, that process. So at that point um, we also are making an application for funding. Um, as I said, we really do rely on, on uh, subventions from various sources, ASPP being one of them. The simple fact of the matter is that for the majority of scholarly work in Canada, we're dealing with limited markets and limited sales. So we need to find a way to enable us to continue to do what it is that we do. You know, we really believe very strongly that scholarly work needs to be widely available. And in order to do that, we need some financial financial assistance. So um, ASPP is one of the, those sources. And, and so we will expect that any author whose project is eligible for that will go through that application. Um, we also ask uh, authors and editors to, to assess sort of what the funding opportunities are in their field. Many institutions have book preparation grants. Um, and, the, and there are often surprising sources of funding. So we work on that in conjunction with authors simultaneous to the approval process and, and towards the end of the approval process. So once we have all of those pieces in place, um, then you know it's time to talk about a contract. And our contract is fairly standard, I think, across across presses. Um, it's important to, to you know to have a discussion with your with the press that you're working with about what expectations are there. Uh, the contract outlines both parties' expectations and responsibilities. So, you know, don't be afraid to open that discussion up early. Um, some, sometimes we do offer conditional, well, every contract is conditional on that approval process being successful, the various components that I've just outlined. Um, so we sometimes do offer contracts at an early stage, but for the most part, our contracts are made once a manuscript has successfully passed through the review process. So at that point, you know, we move, um, once the manuscript has been approved, once all the revisions have been done, then it starts to move to production, at which point, you know, your, your manuscript will be copy edited, designed, typeset, et cetera, and then um, on to marketing. Uh, marketing for scholarly books uh, is, is pretty formulaic in a lot of ways, although we try to be as creative about it as we can. But we're looking at primarily uh, review copies, um, 
uh, flyers and, a, and book display presence at suitable conferences, and we work with our authors through an author questionnaire that outlines all of the possible avenues that we might get the word out for your book. You know, we do a number of print advertisements. We have uh, a strong online presence. Um, uh, we've just started a blog and an RSS feed, so we can try and get the word out to various persons, you know, the people who would be reading your book as, as efficiently as possible. Um, certainly, it, you know, if your book has more of a, a trade appeal, we have we might have more options in terms of book launches or more innovative marketing marketing avenues. We've certainly done um, we we've done all kinds of events uh, in conjunction with authors uh, on a project by project basis. So it's certainly something that we're open to. But we are looking primarily at at that uh, the review the review angle, certainly, to get and, and print advertisements to get the word out about your book. <coughs>